So it's Wednesday evening, time for another farm update. And I'm not gonna say too much about the budget in this uh, intro, uh, does my head in still really. Labour still are saying they're not gonna backtrack and all they're doing it for is to protect family farms. Well, absolute rubbish. Uh, all they're doing is protecting people that have got a lot of money in London, come out into the countryside, buy a big house and two or three pony paddocks and that gets you a million pounds. That's all they're protecting. Nothing to do with farming or food production. Anyway, um, feed are just behind me here actually. And let me just show you this quick. This is one of the bird feeders of about probably 20 of these dotted around the farm. You can see here, there's some food in there and the birds sit on the perch here and pack it out. There's, there's millet, red millet, white millet. I think there's some linseed in there. We put some oilseed rape with it and some wheat to make it up anyway. I'll have a look at that another day. Anyway, this update, we are looking up at, um, it was Lincoln Cathedral uh, on Sunday for the Harvest Festival. So just a, a minute for a minute or two from there and uh, from a neighboring farmer uh, regarding um, the budget. Uh, he, it was his forage harvester that stood out of the uh, stood outside the cathedral, so that was great. And uh, so I, I talked to him. Uh, that's if I include it in this update. I might say that for Sunday yet. I don't know till I start editing it later. And uh, we also did a bit of cultivations on the two beet fields that we uh, the two beet fields that we lifted what, three weeks ago. Now they've had a fair bit of rain on them, and then at the time subsoiling them. If you remember, we did that was the right thing to do it went well but then we had a fair bit of rain afterwards and it turned out to be the wrong thing to do because what it's done the roller on the back of the subsoil has actually packed the soil down level and it means it's not rough and undulating and it can't and uh, because it's level it hasn't been stood the rain as well so that's a bit of a um well more than a shame but anyway i still hope to get it in i don't know but the problem we've got is the weather at the minute is still cloudy it's a little bit bluer in this video but uh, it's clearing a little bit to what it was yesterday but we've had now two weeks two and a half weeks of uh, humidity of 90 plus percent 24 hours a day and that's why it's not really drying so that's not helping things at all anyway we'll look at that cultivations also look at the weaving drill establishment when uh, Reuben um, was drilling uh, few weeks ago now and that looks quite good apart from the two two uh, two sort of issues one one rectifiable straight away and one one that's not so I look at that um, also sugar bait lifting hopefully going to be doing that soon as well and uh, we'll I think that's about it for the intro so thanks ever so much for watching if you make it to the end we'll see you then Ron and I've just come to Lincoln we've got the cathedral behind us it's Sunday afternoon about two o'clock half past two three o'clock and we've got the Harvest Festival in the cathedral here, which is fantastic. Church bells are ringing, just listen to that. Brilliant. And the castle is just here behind us. Lovely area of Lincoln. This is uphill uh, Lincoln. We'll, uh, we'll have a look and walk in, and it's just a really, really lovely historic area up here. Some of you might have been up here. So this is where we're heading. Lovely Tudor buildings here. And that is steep hill down there, and it is steep. When you get down to the bottom, very steep. Down there, you can see there, steep hill. So Rhonda, you are reading a lesson? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm doing a prayer. <laughs> doing a prayer? Yes. Probably we need it thank after you. the news this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, but thank you, Alan. Robson for springing that on me on Thursday. <laughs> anyway, we've got a totally different um, machinery here, a horse and a forage harvester. Stunning building this. It still holds the record for the tallest building in the world for the most number of years. And fantastic that Lincoln Shearing and Farm is here as well. So those of you who aren't farmers watch these videos, that's a forage harvester, which will uh, chop up maize, uh, grass as well probably, I'm not sure whether it does maize, and then maybe we'll do the right attachment on uh, and uh, for, for cattle feed. I think that's just a tourist 
transport. Got two older tractors there in front of the cathedral as well. Just a fantastic building. I've been coming here since I was eight years old. When I was in school in Lincoln, we used to come here, have assemblies here and all sorts of um, services and singing in the choir I was. My voice isn't as good now. There we go, look at that. Yeah. Yes. Good luck, Alan. <laughs> So LRSN, Lincoln, Lincolnshire Rural Support Network. Some really good stats, you've seen this before. I won't go through and dawdle on them again, but this is all from Lincolnshire. Produce. Still a lot of people filling up yet. But just fantastic. That is actually real bread. Is this forgive our impatience, forgive our harsh words, forgive our hard hearts. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So that's the end of the service. People have just taken all the food down now, and uh, we're going to go and have a cup of tea and um, some biscuits in the. Uh, in one of the back rooms here at the cathedral stunning building as you can see um we just had the bishop of lincoln doing his talk and and uh doing a very very interesting guy lots of facts and figures he gave out very knowledgeable on farming as well and uh this this is is him uh really nice guy and uh he was talking about lincolnshire that I didn't realise this fact. 24% of the residents of Lincolnshire work in the food industry, whereas the national average is only 13. So I thought that was a brilliant statistic that just shows how important Lincolnshire is. Lincolnshire is to the county. So we'll, uh, we'll get some young farmers in a minute and have a talk to them about the impact of the budget. They're all having a photo done. I have got Molly and Ben here. Molly, you, your family farm near Louth. Yeah. Yeah, and Ben? Uh, my dad's a manager of a small, of a quite a medium sized farm as well, and we do some contracts in the summer as well. Yep, that's right. So, Molly, for a start, your farm, you were saying a minute ago that about if your granddad died today, it would have huge implications for your farm. Yep, definitely. So, we're a three generations farm. We've got my granddad, my dad, and my brother and I. Um, if granddad did die tomorrow, we'd have to find 800,000 straight away like that, which is very scary. Very, very, very scary. scary. And. Is that a worry? Obviously, everybody you're talking about it as a family. Definitely, yeah. yeah. We had Grandad in tears yesterday because he was quite worried about it. Because, so it's affecting family farmers all around the country, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. We've had LRS in here talking, haven't we? And we've had obviously the tragic um, circumstances in in someone with Alex early on this year, yeah. and uh, and all this. It's just all part of the whole whole problem. Yeah. And I mean, are, are you looking as well? You're thinking about the, the, the generally when you look at what Labour have done. They're taking away the double cap pickup allowance. They are um, the national insurance contributions going up. So all that sort of thing and what they're doing. Then there's talk. Have you heard about there's talk of a fertilizer tax coming yeah. on this next year? Mm -hmm. So everything they're doing, they're making it difficult to making produce it hard for, hard for yeah. produce food. And it's so important, isn't it, to, that we produce food? Yes, yeah. Farmers and never stop. And no, we can't not stop we at to, all. We need to protect British food security. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. What, what's your What's your views then on on the, the keep on about working a working person? That they're, they're protecting the working person. Surely, aren't farmers a working a person? Oh, Everybody in the thing, yeah. they're thinking in the city, the people that deal with the big amounts of money and sort of keep the economy spinning. But whereas us farmers, we keep. We keep England yep. eating, yep. and we can keep some part of the world's living. Depending if you know, if you grow field beans, that'll go to the Middle East, yeah. and some parts that go all over the world. Mm. You've got mm. to keep the world eating and the world spinning. Yeah, but great. Anyway, thank you. Thank buddy. you very much. Thank, thank you. Very much. Just finished the Harvest Festival, and uh, great service, wasn't it? It was brilliant. Really, yeah. and yeah, the really Bishop of Lincoln was great. I thought he was. Yes, yeah, definitely. Really yeah. knowledgeable. Yeah. Anyway, Mark, budget, not good news. No, so the, the sobering thing is with it is the, the cap that they've put this one million, yeah. anything over them, anything, I think, well, any land worth over a million, yeah. they've put this the 20% tax That's on. That's right. They've just got that completely wrong. Yeah. This, this figure is wrong, this one million is wrong. Um, 
What I want to know is where who advised them that? This is the crucial. This Somebody is the thing, who advised to... it because let's face it, any viable farming business, any viable farming business, the asset wise for that business and land that they need will be worth way over that amount. Yep. Way over that amount. But as as landowners and farmers, as farmers, to get the, the, the profitability of what they're earning off that land yeah. is very small. Yeah. So to pay a massive tax bill, the only way of generating cash from that asset is to sell. And yeah. that's what none of us want to do. I'm third generation, I've got three children myself. Yeah. All I see myself is as a caretaker of that land to pass on to the next that's right. generation. You, you, yeah, you don't own it, it just keeps no, going, just, passing yes. down. But what the government are doing now, what they'll do, if, it, if something happened to me tomorrow, to pass that land down now, we would have to sell to pay that tax bill. Yeah. Now they need to up it, because that million pound, all that is, is someone's done well in life and they've bought themselves a nice house and a pony paddock yep. that's worth a million pounds, yep. they will get away with it. Yep. But any viable farming business that's been in a family for generations, mm -hmm. it will kill. It will kill the family farm the way they've done it. They yeah. need to up that limit to at least, at least five million. Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're right, definitely. And I mean, but it's not other. It's not, it's not only that, is it? It's the pickups taxes going pick really. Tax, yeah. It's they're going to put tax on fertilizer next year. It's national insurance contributions. It's the scaling mm. down, the seventy percent reduction on the on the dealing payments in this mm. next year. I was at. I was at the NFU conference 2023. Yes. Keir Starmer stood and talked and spoke well, as you would expect yes. from a politician in his position. Yeah. And he said, we need to look after family farms. We need to look after farming. In the times we're in with, with, the, with having the two worst harvests on record, and he has just completely gone back on that. He was talking about the worst thing ever is losing a family farm. Mm. Well, this is going. There isn't going to be a family. There aren't no, going to be family no. farms when it comes to passing it yeah, over. Yeah. And the very sobering thing is, okay, there's eight, 18 months, if I'm correct, with yes, that we've got Bef time to sort things yeah. out and sort succession. But how many? And going on a, how many older farmers are going to do something s silly to themselves yeah. just so they 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 do pass away in that time? So they have not. So they're not leaving a, a massive, massive, unpayable, yeah. unless you sell, yeah. tax bill to yeah. the next generation. I think the thing is as well, that I don't think they understand at all how much it costs to put food on the plate. On the plate, no. No, not at all. Uh, food is it's too cheap really yeah, to yeah, be fair yeah. people don't prioritize food anymore no, do they no, they no, don't prioritize no, food no. and when you look at the price of the machinery here this is your forage harvester here behind us something like that what, what what's Some, that yeah 300? something like 300 over three hundred thousand pounds yeah, there you go and it's just getting unjustifiable to buy yeah. machines and carry on farming for such what we're getting back we, yeah it, the, the profits we're making are very minimal yeah. and absolutely it's put I tell you what, he's put the minimum wage, or the, the rates of raise, put the minimum wage up. I wish I got that per hour I worked. Yes, I know. That's I, the problem, yeah, isn't it? We're is. not getting that. For the no, hours we're no, working, we're, not, we're, not, no, we're, we're no. not getting that. And now they're going to tax on our assets mm. that we've already got. That's right. And I, but I think that this, this just further emphasises the whole food system's broken. Yes. The, the yeah. fact that the, the price of food in, in shops and supermarket is going up. But yet the price we sell at is going, going down. down. Yeah, exactly. So where, yeah, why, why is that? What's, there's something there? wrong. Something's wrong with the system, isn't, isn't it? The whole system. Definitely. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Mark. We've got the cathedral bells singing. No, it's lovely, that, isn't, <laughs> isn't it? it? Yeah, what look a way at that. to end the, what a way to end the uh, well, service. Look at that. Just brilliant, isn't it? What a building, isn't it? Yeah. You look, you look at that, everybody. Look at that cathedral there. So I think didn't it take 300 years to build or something? Something it's, like it's, that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, because yeah. I think it used, there used to be some spires. There were some spires on, right, right on the very top there, and they blew off in the wind, and they didn't put them back on, apparently. And when they were up, that was when it was the tallest building. Anyway, Mark. No, thank off you. Off yeah. something to drink. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks. It's Monday afternoon, about three o'clock. I've just got back from a funeral um, from... Uh, he's one of my father's best friends. My father died in November 20, uh, 2020, so latter end of COVID, so we could only have 30 people at the funeral, which was disappointing because he was a very popular uh, guy in Lincolnshire. Anyway, a um, lot of people there uh, who, we've, uh, who I know, and I've been to see this, this guy regularly every month virtually since my father died until two or three months ago. Anyway, I'll show you the service sheet from that in a minute because some of you will recognise him because he's a, a well-known land agent in Lincolnshire. Anyway, I've got um, Will Hollis here from GB News. We did something with them this morning. I'll put a clip up from him uh, in a bit, or you might have even have seen it earlier on in the clip. Got Tom working on the puma in the background here, and we've finally decided to start cultivating some of this land that had sugar beet on that you saw us loading it with an excavator 
last week's update. It's not dead dry, but I think the weather's changing a bit. The atmosphere's a little bit drier and it's coming drier towards the end of the week, hopefully and sunnier. So we're gonna try and get some of this land um, drilled. We've got three fields here, we need to get wheat planted. Just looking at this, it's not brilliant as you can see. It was so lowed and then we've subsoiled it. We'll, we'll have a look at this and see and we'll decide what we, what we do. But I think we're gonna to have to drill it fairly rough, put plenty of seed on and hope for the best. So we've got the Simba Express on which is a small disc machine to just try and create a bit of tilt. Nala, come here. It will need probably doing two or three times. Oh, it's not doing a bad job. Well, it is, no, it's not doing a good job either. Wet, what I call wet blathery lumps just shows how wet it is in the soil profile. Maybe subsoiling it in the end was wrong because it's put it down level, I don't know. Trouble with this land, when you've got growing sugar beet on land that's not ideal for growing sugar beet, what do you do? Not brilliant this isn't. We look at Frankie there and some of these lumps, how big they are and what it's like. It's really wet in here, some of this land. Oh dear, that is wet. That is wet. <laughs> Frank is after sugar beet. Just see, looking at my hands here. It seems to be leaving it a bit rough or rougher in the middle. It's not brilliant, any of it, but the middle seems to be a bit rougher. Whether it is or not, I'm not sure. Maybe it's not, I don't know. It maybe is a bit. You can just see that flicking a bit more up between the wheels, possibly. So just waiting to do a live piece for GB News. Just waiting for a few minutes for the studio to let us know when that is. And Jason is just cutting some hedges, doing a bit more. Just having a walk over another one of the fields Next to the A17, just there, see the traffic. This is one of the fields that didn't have a crop on again, this uh, this harvest, cover crop, um, and then we mould it and um, soloed it, had it dry or fallow all over the summer, and then sprayed it with glyphosate and drilled it, and looks really good. So this is inherently wet along here, next to the wood, but with putting the mould drain through it, and we mould it, into the dike, Tom went into the dike there where Will is, it did a good job. And when you look down the field here, really good establishment. Pleased with this. And um, this is a variety called Oxford. We grew this from our own seed this last year up at the Heath. We bought a ton of high grade seed and then harvested it and that ton went over about five acres and, we've, and then the seed from that five acres has drilled um, about a hundred and, what's it drilled? 170 or 80 acres. So looking good here, pleased with that. It's Tuesday morning, another murky, overcast, cloudy, damp day. It's, uh, it's relentless this weather. And as you saw early on in this clip, the land is not working very well at all but uh, not a lot we can do. Um, we have got this sugar beet here is going to be lifted second half of this week. So you'll see this in Sunday's update. And the good thing is this beet pad is all clear. So this concrete finally got rid of the bales, Reuben swept it and it's finally going to be used for what it was built for many years ago. Um, so yeah, this sugar beet behind us here, 
will get up and hopefully all go on there. The 34 acres and I know the crop wasn't planted till May the 9th so it will be lower yielding because of that but hopefully um, we can manage to get it on that concrete. It's that time of the year again when Nala's molting <laughs> and yeah huge amount of fur. Nala come here Nala no don't eat it come here. I'm just in one of the fields that we had the Capulet beans in and that Reuben drilled with the weaving sabertine when uh, when I was in Portugal. When would that be? About the 10th, maybe 12th of um, October, uh, maybe somewhere around there, maybe 14th of October. And uh, it's come really well, uh, except a couple of little issues that um, we know about that won't uh, won't happen next time. We've got to res we can resurrect one of them now, actually we will do in the next day or so but another one um we can't so you can see looking across there germination's really good but we've got a gap there and that's what we call a blocked coulter and that's where the seed pipe that uh, carries the seed from the hopper or the distribution head down to the tine in the ground was blocked and unfortunately it's been blocked so every breed up and down the field it shows and then here's the tram line where the sprayer runs and it's in there so that one and that one's meant to be there because that's the sprayer it does it every 32 meters automatically and there uh, it's uh it's not and it's like it on four fields as unfortunate as well um you can see some of the beans here are, are growing some of the capulet beans a few that's littered just here um and the other issue is on the headland got some gaps so the out that's that was done on the outside of the fields going from the lane just there through to here and then when the drill was dropped in it it does take a while for the seed to come out and you can just see here there's some gaps missing that's the overlaps when it's when the drills come out the field so what we need to do is here we just need to go with one one breed down here with a drill 6.4 meters it will take it to way out where frankie is it'll be out here somewhere and uh, and it'll be fine and it'll fill that in but it will obviously be a bit backward but just something else we know there is an attachment or uh, a, a um, something we can do on the settings of the drill and the control panel but we can't use that with the case puma it needs to be on uh, something a new attractor with headland management which the case hasn't got and then i've just spotted this there's a wet spot here and that's why this wheat's not come not quite sure what's gone on here because there's never been a wet spot before yeah listen see there yeah very wet just there and then this is in another field that was really wet I drove down the track side here two or three weeks ago and just showing you how wet it was and Tom has mould, put a mould drain down, uh, all done all this headland, but he's done it really close, done it only a metre apart. In fact, there's probably still see, yeah, there's one. There's one there, there's the slot going into the dike. Another one just there. So all these, this headland's been done really close. And uh, yeah, it's not as anywhere near as good as the rest of it, but there's more than enough wheat there to make a, a half decent crop. And the rest of it feels good. So that's it for this midweek update. Just wanted to show you the lanes here that uh, you showed that I saw you, uh, was it early on or was it the other day? I think it was the other day we were looking at the lanes and how, how bad and rutted they were. And Ruben and Tom have just done a temporary repair job on these lanes, ready for this sugar beet that we're going to lift, hopefully, probably um, tomorrow, all being well, Thursday. So uh, when we get lorries coming up and down here, they're going to make a bit more of a mess. So they have brought some planings out on here, just scattered them along and used a bit of a cheap grader that we've uh, sort of cobbled together a bit ago. It's so just a, an RSJ beam on the front of an old drag. Anyway, um, we're going to do these lanes properly next, next spring with all the heap of planings on the other beet pad. But yeah, so these have been uh, uh, just sort of rectified a bit, just a bit of a temporary repair. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this update. Thanks ever so much for watching and we'll see you as always Sunday morning, 8am and have a good rest of the week.